NASA just confirmed Dream Chaser's most devastating setback yet. The space plane that promised to revolutionize cargo delivery has been delayed until late 2026, and it won't even reach the ISS. Here's the brutal reality. While SpaceX completed over 350 flights, Dream Chaser hasn't flown once. The ISS retires in 2030, leaving just four years to prove a multi-billion dollar investment. NASA already removed the guaranteed seven mission contract, making this a do or die situation. The fatal flaw, Sierra Space bet everything on ULA's troubled Vulcan rocket, a decision that's now backfiring spectacularly. Let's dive right in. How Dream Chaser was supposed to change everything. When Dream Chaser first emerged, it solved real problems that NASA desperately needed fixed. Unlike dragon capsules that splashed down in the ocean, Dream Chaser would land on runways like a regular airplane. This means delicate scientific experiments return safely without violent water impacts that can destroy months of research. Think protein crystal growth experiments worth millions of dollars or time-sensitive biological samples that could lead to medical breakthroughs. Ocean landings often damage or contaminate these materials. Runway landings preserve them perfectly. NASA saw this potential and backed Sierra Space with massive contracts. The original deal guaranteed seven ISS resupply missions worth hundreds of millions of dollars. This wasn't just funding. It was a vote of confidence that Dream Chaser would become as reliable as SpaceX's Dragon. The technical advantages seemed obvious. Dream Chaser could carry 12,000 pounds of cargo to the ISS and bring 4,000 pounds back to Earth. More importantly, it could land at any major airport, allowing immediate access to returned experiments instead of waiting for ocean recovery operations. But one critical decision would unravel this entire vision. The fatal choice that doomed Dream. Chaser Sierra Space faced a pivotal moment. Choose SpaceX's proven Falcon 9 rocket or gamble on ULA's brand new Vulcan rocket. They picked Vulcan, and this decision explains every problem that followed. Why did they choose an unproven rocket over SpaceX's reliable workhorse? ULA promised Sierra Space priority treatment and exclusive partnerships. They painted a picture where Sierra Space would be Vulcan's premier customer, getting first-class service while SpaceX juggled dozens of other clients. The strategy seemed logical, Vulcan was designed specifically for heavy payloads and national security missions. It would use Blue Origin's advanced B-4 engines, which promised better performance than Falcon 9's older Merlin engines. ULA's decades of experience launching critical government satellites added credibility to their pitch. But Vulcan's development became a nightmare. Blue Origin's BE-4 engines took nearly a decade to develop instead of the projected three years. Manufacturing problems, Design flaws and testing failures created endless delays. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Falcon 9 kept flying successfully month after month. The numbers reveal the devastating impact of this choice. While Sierra Space waited for Vulcan to work, SpaceX completed over 350 Falcon 9 flights with a 98% success rate. Vulcan has flown exactly twice. Sierra Space bet their entire future on a rocket that barely exists operationally. This wasn't just bad luck, it was predictable. Blue Origin had never built engines for operational rockets before. They were developing revolutionary technology from scratch while SpaceX refined proven systems. Sierra Space chose innovation over reliability at the worst possible time. By 2024, the delays became impossible to ignore. NASA quietly restructured Sierra Space's contract, removing the guaranteed seven mission requirement this seemingly small change destroyed Dream Chaser's business foundation. Under the original contract, Sierra Space had guaranteed revenue streams worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Seven missions meant seven paychecks, regardless of whether competitors perform better. This financial security allowed long-term planning and justified massive development investments. Now Sierra Space faces a brutal reality. They get one demonstration flight to prove Dream Chaser works. If that goes well, NASA might consider additional missions, but there are no guarantees, no committed funding, no financial safety net. The timeline makes this even worse. Dream Chaser's first flight, originally scheduled for 2022, has been pushed to late 2026. 
This won't even be a real ISS mission, just a free flight demonstration to prove the vehicle can launch, fly, and land without exploding. Even if everything goes perfectly, the earliest possible operational mission would be 2027 or 2028. The ISS retires in 2030. That leaves maybe three years to justify billions in development costs and prove commercial viability. Compare this to SpaceX's Dragon, which has been flying regular ISS missions since 2020. The mathematics are unforgiving. Sierra Space needed to establish operational capability by 2022 or 2023 to build a meaningful track record before ISS retirement. Now they're racing against a clock that's almost run out. The financial implications of choosing Vulcan become clear when you examine launch costs. SpaceX charges approximately $67 million for a Falcon 9 launch, thanks to their reusable rocket technology. Each Falcon 9 first stage can fly up to 20 times, dramatically reducing per mission expenses. Vulcan launches cost $150 to $200 million each because ULA still uses expendable rockets. They build a brand new rocket for every mission, then throw it away after one use. This 1960s approach creates massive cost disadvantages in today's competitive market. Sierra Space could have saved 80 to $130 million per mission by choosing Falcon 9. Over seven planned missions, that's potentially $900 million in savings. Money that could have accelerated development, increased testing, or funded backup plans. The cost difference extends beyond simple launch prices. SpaceX's rapid production and high launch frequency means shorter wait times between missions. Need to fly next month? Falcon 9 can probably accommodate that request. Vulcan's limited production means customers wait years for available launch slots. This production bottleneck strangled Dream Chaser's development timeline. Even if Sierra Space wanted to increase their testing frequency or accelerate their schedule, Vulcan simply couldn't support rapid mission turnaround. They became trapped in slow motion while the space industry moved at SpaceX's breakneck pace. The opportunity cost becomes staggering when you consider what Sierra Space could have achieved with Falcon 9's reliability and availability. They might have completed their first flight by 2023, established operational capability by 2024, and built a strong track record before ISS retirement. While Sierra Space struggled with Vulcan delays, their competitors seized market opportunities. SpaceX's Dragon became NASA's primary workhorse, completing dozens of cargo deliveries and crew rotations with mechanical precision. NASA grew so dependent on Dragon that other vehicles began looking redundant. Even Boeing's Starliner, despite years of software problems and development headaches, managed to complete a successful crewed test flight to the ISS. Boeing proved their vehicle could actually perform its core mission. Sierra Space still hasn't proven Dream Chaser can fly at all. The irony cuts deep. Dream Chaser was supposed to be the innovative option, the cutting-edge alternative that would shake up the industry. Instead, it became the cautionary tale about over-promising and under-delivering. Blue Origin, another NASA partner, keeps making headlines with their lunar lander development and space tourism flights. They've at least demonstrated functional hardware and operational capability. Sierra Space? Still building their first flight-ready vehicle. Here's the timeline that should terrify Sierra Space executives. NASA plans to deorbit the ISS around 2030, possibly earlier if structural problems accelerate. The agency is already transitioning to commercial space stations, like Axiom Space's planned facility and other private alternatives. This transition fundamentally changes Dream Chaser's business case. The original contracts were built around ISS resupply missions, a steady, predictable revenue stream worth billions over multiple years. But commercial space stations will likely have different requirements, different docking systems, different operational needs. Will these future stations even need runway landing cargo vehicles? Maybe they'll prefer the simplicity and cost effectiveness of traditional capsules. Maybe they'll design their own logistics systems. Sierra Space is about to find out they've spent a decade developing a solution for a problem that might not exist much longer. The window for proving Dream Chaser's value to the ISS is essentially closed. Even if the 2026 demo flight succeeds perfectly, there's barely time for operational missions before the station's retirement. 
Sierra Space needed to fly in 2022 or 2023 to build a track record. Now they're facing existential questions about their entire business model. The Dream Chaser delays reveal a deeper problem with American space strategy. NASA's plan to fund multiple providers was smart in theory. Competition drives innovation and provides backup options. But it only works if all the providers can actually deliver functional hardware. Sierra Space's failure leaves NASA with fewer options, not more. SpaceX's Dragon carries most of the load. Boeing's Starliner flies occasionally when it works properly. And Dream Chaser remains a expensive promise. This concentration of capability in SpaceX hands gives Elon Musk's company enormous leverage over NASA's mission planning. The international implications are significant too. While American companies struggle with development delays, China launches space station missions with routine efficiency. Europe's cargo vehicles serve the ISS reliably. Russia, despite political tensions, maintains operational spacecraft. Dream Chaser was supposed to demonstrate American innovation leadership. Instead, it highlights American aerospace dysfunction. Commercial space development was supposed to be faster and more efficient than traditional government programs. Dream Chaser proves that commercial doesn't automatically mean competent. Sierra Space has taken longer to develop their vehicle than NASA took to design and build the original space shuttle in the 1970s. Despite the grim outlook, Sierra Space still has theoretical paths to success. The most obvious move would be abandoning Vulcan and switching to Falcon 9. SpaceX has launched vehicles for competitors before. They're not petty about it. A Falcon 9 launch Dream Chaser could fly much sooner and much cheaper. But this switch would require swallowing enormous pride and admitting their Vulcan partnership was a massive strategic error. It would also mean redesigning Dream Chaser's integration hardware and going through new certification processes. More delays, more costs, more uncertainty. The second option involves pivoting to future commercial space stations instead of chasing the ISS market. Companies like Axiom Space, Blue Origin, and others are developing next-generation orbital facilities that might launch in the early 2030s. Dream Chaser could position itself as the logistics provider for these new stations. This strategy has merit but requires Sierra Space to survive financially until the commercial station market matures. They'd need to secure new funding, maintain their workforce, and keep Dream Chaser technology current during potentially years of waiting. Not impossible, but extremely challenging for a company that's already burned through billions in development costs. This is exactly why NASA's fatal discovery matters so much. Dream Chaser's failure isn't just about one spacecraft. It reveals how even billion-dollar aerospace programs can collapse from a single wrong decision. Sierra Space bet everything on an unproven rocket and lost the space race before it even started. What this means for America's space future is profound. We're watching the consolidation of space logistics into fewer hands, with SpaceX dominating while traditional aerospace struggles to adapt. This concentration of capability creates both opportunities and vulnerabilities that will shape the next decade of space exploration. The ISS era is ending, but commercial space stations are rising. Companies like Axiom Space and Blue Origin are building the next generation of orbital facilities, and they'll need reliable logistics partners. Dream Chaser's window for the ISS may have closed, but the broader space economy is just opening up. Here's what's happening next. Sierra Space must decide whether to abandon Vulcan for Falcon 9 or double down on their failing strategy. Meanwhile, new players like Relativity Space and Rocket Lab are developing their own cargo capabilities. The 2026 to 2030 period will determine which companies survive the transition to commercial space stations. How do you think this shakeup will impact the future of space logistics? Will we see more consolidation around SpaceX? Or will new competitors emerge to challenge their dominance? This is Space Hub, and we dive deep into the decisions that shape our space future. The next few years will rewrite the rules of space access, and we'll be here to analyze every breakthrough and setback. The space economy is becoming a trillion dollar reality, and the companies that master logistics today will control the orbital frontier tomorrow. What if I told you that Elon Musk just shocked NASA by revealing a critical flaw in SpaceX's moon landing plan? 
With just two years until Artemis III, Starship faces a deadly problem. How do you safely land a 400-foot rocket on the lunar surface without landing legs? While SpaceX perfected the chopstick catch system on Earth, the moon has no tower to catch Starship. This forces a dramatic design choice that could make or break humanity's return to the moon. Let's dive right in. To understand why this is such a crisis, let's look at the numbers. Starship weighs over 1,400 tons when fully fueled. That's equivalent to 350 cars stacked on top of each other, attempting to land gently on a surface with zero atmosphere to help slow it down. For comparison, the Apollo Lunar Module weighed just 15 tons. Starship is 93 times heavier. Imagine the difference between parking a bicycle versus landing a freight train with pinpoint accuracy. This weight difference isn't just a scaling problem. It's a fundamental physics challenge. The Apollo LM had four legs specifically engineered for its 15-ton mass. For Starship's 1,400 tons, those legs would need to be exponentially stronger, yet remain light enough for space travel. What makes this even more concerning is the political pressure. While NASA publicly supports SpaceX's timeline, former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine recently questioned whether this ambitious goal is realistic. When former NASA leadership starts expressing doubts about their own program, that's a red flag. This brings us to something SpaceX doesn't want you to notice. New satellite imagery from their McGregor, Texas facility, shows mysterious construction projects appearing almost overnight. Massive tower structures that don't match any known Starship testing equipment. What's SpaceX building in secret? Industry sources suggest these could be test rigs for lunar landing systems. But here's what's fascinating. If these towers are for testing landing legs, it means SpaceX is quietly abandoning their no-legs-needed philosophy. Meanwhile, back at Starbase, observers have spotted unusual components. Nose cones with different configurations, airlock systems, and interior layouts that don't match the standard Starship we've been seeing. These parts belong to something called the Human Landing System, HLS, a specialized version of Starship designed exclusively for moon missions. This evidence points to a critical decision SpaceX must make, and every option carries catastrophic risks. NASA's Artemis contract requires SpaceX to choose between two fundamentally different approaches, each with the potential to doom the entire mission. The most straightforward approach involves permanent landing legs attached to Starship HLS. These legs would remain extended